Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So today I want to talk about a concept that I teach inside my No BS Weight Loss membership called the 1% Level Ups. And recently inside of our membership, uh, I just added a full-blown lesson that talked all about this concept in module four of our flagship course. So when you join the No BS Weight Loss program, you take the No BS Weight Loss course first. It's four modules, short videos that you can consume quite easily. And in the last module, the very last one, we start talking about like our future self. And we start talking about how like the person at the end of the journey, how do we get there? A lot of, if you listen to my last podcast about not good, do, like not being good enough or things not being enough when you're trying to lose weight, we really can't get to our future self without understanding one fundamental concept, which is getting to her is a series of decisions made each day that evolve over time. What the diet industry has taught us, and it's, I think it's the most piss poor thing that they do to us. That is like, I know today you're ordering McDonald's, but tomorrow we're eating chicken and broccoli. Like, it, the diet industry has literally taught us that we have to go from who we are today to who we're going to be at the end. And they don't help us navigate all the mental hurdles we're going to have to overcome. They don't help us change as a person. So when I first started losing weight, as you know, I weighed 250 pounds. I had hundred pounds to get off. And that version of me sitting there on day one for fuck sure didn't think she was going to lose hundred pounds. Not an ounce. There was not a twitch of a muscle, a hint of hair on my head that was saying like, today's the day. We're going to do it. You're going to lose all your weight. All right. No. Do you know what was going on in my head? This won't work. You've never been able to do it. I doubt anything you do is going to help. That was me on day one. That was probably me on even day, I don't know, 71. But here's the thing. What I changed fundamentally was this idea that I know that in the past, I have thought what I was doing is not good enough. And that's never worked for me. I also know in the past that making radical changes and trying to be my future self on day one never worked long term. Something clicked in me that just said, in order to lose weight, you got to start somewhere. And you got to start with stuff that you can do today. Because the one thing that you need to caution yourself on is for me, it was doing shit I wasn't ready to do. Every single day, if I didn't feel like on a scale of one to four, with one being hell no, four being all in, if I wasn't feeling like today doing these things is at least a three or better, I took it down a notch. I didn't do those things. And it was a game changer. So I call it the theory of the 1% level up. And that's why I teach it inside my program. Because you have to start somewhere. And in order to one day live like you think you're going to live at the end of your weight loss journey, today has to start small. One of the examples that I give a lot of my members is they will talk about, I just want to lose all my weight because I want to be able to walk into my closet and I want to, I want everything to fit. I want to be proud of myself and I want to love my clothes. I'm like, okay, so today you're probably not going to be able to go do that, but we got to start somewhere because you can't just like go all buy new clothes and do all that shit. But what could you do today? You could go to your closet and you could take an inventory of clothes that when you look at them, make you feel like shit. You could at least buy plastic tubs and pack away. Like if you're not ready to get rid of skinny clothes, gold clothes, whatever you call them, you could pack them away so that when you go into your closet every day, you're not triggered to think, 
That's what I used to weigh. I've really let myself go. That's a first step. Another first step I tell them, like a 1% level up to get to future self who's wearing whatever she wants is today. She goes out and buys a couple of pairs of pants that actually fit her. That don't feel like shit. That aren't falling off her ass. Like these are the things that we have to, we have to think about 1% changes because then over time we evolve into the person we want to be. So let's talk about it. There are two key points when it comes to doing 1% level ups. Number one, any change that you make is better than thinking it's not good enough. I really recommend you go back and listen to my last podcast on not good enough on good enough thinking. It is key to this concept because a 1% change is not going to feel super hard. It's not going to make a drastic difference on the scale in three days. Those 1% changes, they add up. And this is what I always see my clients say. The ones that embrace this theory, they lose weight in the beginning. They, they lose the average one to two pounds a week, making small changes. And, but this is the difference between them and people who just go ham in the beginning. Because even though I teach them not to, I swear to God, even my members are like, well, I'm going to like Franken diet this. I'm going to do most of what Corinne says. But do you remember those bullshit things that Susan Powder told us back in the 90s? Well, I'm going to also do some of that too. We're not sneaking shit in, y'all. We're going to do what Kren tells you to do. But the problem is, what I see with my clients is the ones that embrace it, they wake up in 90 days, they've been making these small changes, and they're like, holy shit, I'm like down 25 pounds. And it's felt easy. Like, they've made some mistakes but they haven't talked to themselves like a dickhead about it. They've been slowly making changes and it's just adding up. And every, like every 10 to 14 days, they're ready to do a little bit more because they keep feeling like there's momentum behind their back. So you have to remember that when you are going to make any change, it's not that it's not good enough, you have to teach yourself how to think about your changes are going to add up. They're making a difference. And every single one matters. Every single one matters. All the changes you make until you get to your future self, every one of them matters. You cannot afford to tell yourself that they don't. People who quit losing weight that's the conversation they're having. They're saying this won't matter. They're saying this isn't good enough. That's the people who quit. They're not quitting because it was actually hard. They're quitting because they were hard on themselves, which is completely different. And if you ever want to lose weight, you better work with me because I'm going to teach you how to quit fucking being hard on yourself in the stupidest of ways. We all do it. I'm not making fun of you. I was dumbass too. I spent half my life talking to myself like a complete asshole. And I had to unlearn how to do that. And that's how I ended up losing weight. So you've got to make sure that number one, that you remember every change matters. And number two, you've got to be thinking about how this change does matter. So a lot of people... Like they'll be like, okay, every change matters, but I want you to add gas to your fire. I want you to tell yourself, and here's why it matters. Here's what I can expect if I keep doing this in 14 days, in 28 days. You need to give your brain evidence about what to expect. Number one, so it can look for it. But number two, the more you write about how these are the changes I made today, these are the little things that I did, they matter, and here's why. You know where your brain's not going? You always fail. You never do it right. You probably won't lose weight. Remember how you regained in 2002. 
the more you focus on what you're doing, why it matters and what you can expect, the more you train your brain to stay out of the garbage dumpster fire of your past. We don't need to go there. I don't give a fuck what happened in your past. You shouldn't either. We want to care about and weight loss. What are we doing today? What can we do today? We want to be proud of it. We want to give ourselves this idea of what to expect from it. And so that our brains can keep going to the future that we're creating for ourselves. It is not going to the dumpster fire of what has happened in our past. So I will tell you, there is a big warning that needs to be said here. You're going to be tempted by diet culture to think that some faster weight loss hacks are going to be better. And it's just not true. Most people don't survive those types of programs where they are trying to get you to change radically. Any program that has you dramatically changing everything you do on a dime, it usually people only lose about 10 to 25% of their weight at best. And then once they get stuck and stalled after 10 to 25% because they're burning out, because they're not dealing with what's going on in their mind, guess what they do? They start eating because they're frustrated they're not losing weight. So they start eating for relief. And the next thing you know, you are right back to where you began, if not with more weight. Because people just run out of steam and they need to take that break. So the key here with 1% level ups is creating small, doable new habits, making small changes that are going to add up fast over time. 1% level ups look like this. You, if you're like me back in the day, I ate ice cream every night. My first 1% level up was to stop eating out of a carton on the couch, putting my ice cream in a big ass bowl. And then I could sit on the couch. I could eat that ice cream, but I couldn't go back to the carton. Even though I wanted to. You would think like, well, that doesn't seem hard. You're getting your ice cream. Try it. Your brain's still going to act like a hissy fit. It's going to be like, no, why bother? If you're just going to eat out of the bowl, that won't be good enough. Or when you finish the bowl, it's like, oh, a little bit more won't hurt. I mean, you're eating ice cream and every single diet you've ever been on says you can't have it. That's hard in the moment to say. We did good today. We agreed we'd do this. We followed through. And if I keep following through and what I say I'm going to do, I bet in 14 days, I might want to eat less because I'm getting ice cream every night. Whatever it is you want to think. When I first started, when it came to pizza, we ate pizza all the time. I used to eat a half of a large. I started agreeing with my husband. I do, let's order a medium and I can have half. Then we went from eating meat lovers to throwing a few veggies on there and getting one less meat. Then we went from thick crust to thin crust. Then I went to two to three slices with a salad. Then I went to two slices with some salad or fruit. And then I just got to where I didn't even want pizza anymore because we were eating it so frequently. I only wanted to have pizza when it felt like a treat, when we would really enjoy it. And just on a super busy night, I wasn't eating pizza every night anymore because I was like giving up on my life. I had no energy for anything. So all we did was order pizza or I had a bad day and pizza was going to solve it. I gave up that kind of eating and it started with, those small little changes. So sometimes the 1% level up can be just leveling up the quality of the food you're eating, like adding some fruit instead of having, you know, a second serving of whatever you cook at night for dinner, have your little bowl of fruit instead. It can be quantity, serve yourself a little bit less than you normally do. Whatever it is, 1% level ups, the way that I found mine was I would wake up each day and I would say, what is one little thing I can do today that's better than yesterday. And then I would ask myself on a scale of one to four, one being no, four being all in. What do I rate myself on being able to get that done? So that's how you find them. So 
the first like one to 10 days, it's not going to seem like much is going on in your 1% level ups. You'll be feeling like it's not good enough and you'll have to like, that's why I want you to listen to the previous episode. You have to tell yourself, no, it's not true. We're waiting for things to add up. You might not lose at a fast pace. So many of you want to start diets and you're just like, if I'm not losing four to five pounds a week, I must be doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong if you're losing four to five pounds every week. That's not how your body was meant to lose weight. That's why so many of us rebound gain when we stop diets because we treat our body like an asshole to lose the weight. That's why so many people burn out and need a break from their diet or just a weekend off. A normal pace is a half a pound to two pounds a week. Get the fuck over it. If you want to lose faster than that, then at least tell yourself the truth. I'm probably going to lose faster. I'm going to do some dickhead diet, but I'm not setting myself up to keep it off. I'm putting my body at risk to rebound, gain all of my weight. Because if you want to go back to your past, here's a good opportunity to go back to your past. When you start a shitty diet, that is going to restrict you and deprive you, underfuel you, remove your favorite foods. Go back to your history and look at those diets. Why are you trying to lose weight again? Because they didn't work. If you lost all your weight and you gained it back because you couldn't sustain what they told you, what the fuck are you even doing? Why are you telling yourself it worked? It never worked. You punished yourself until you ran out of steam and couldn't punish yourself anymore. That's the truth. So if we're going to tell the truth about weight loss, let's just be like, you got to be honest if you want to lose weight. Honesty will carry you far. So that first 10 days won't feel like you're making drastic changes. You won't have the dopamine and the, the high energy around that, but you will have pride. If every single day, you tell yourself, here's what I did. I'm proud of myself. This is what I'm going to, this is what I can expect. You can create a sense of momentum for yourself and a sense of pride. Days 11 through 30, that's where your traction and your momentum really start kicking in with 1% level ups. Things just start feeling easier. And you are seeing Lots of progress because you've snuck up on changes. Like your brain didn't have to go through the freak, freak out of like, oh my God, we used to do this and now we're doing this. You missed out on all that. You circumvented your brain, which is great. So you might notice a few bigger weeks in your weight loss, but you won't be deprived. And it won't feel as hard as it normally does. You flow right past that 10 to 25%. Like when we are doing 1% changes, most people lose more than 25% of their weight because they have given themselves a gift of ease, cheerleading, looking forward instead of backward, not talking to themselves like an asshole and figuring out each day, like the stronger you get with your confidence, the stronger the relationship with you gets, guess what? You turn the heat up on yourself. You can take bigger challenges. What you score as a three or four on that one to four scale becomes harder. Not because you have to, but because you feel up to it now. The earlier version of you wasn't ready for that. But over time with 1% changes, you've created the version who can. So I want you to try level ups, all of you. I want you to see how it goes. And especially if you're a No BS Weight Loss member, I want you to get coaching. I want you to go to Ask Coaches and talk in the Facebook group about like, when I do 1% level ups, here's what's working. And here's the shit my brain still tells me. And teach me how to shut my brain down so that I can put more ease into my weight loss. All right, everybody, have a good week and I'll talk to you soon.